إن عظمت ذنوبي كثرة يا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما Can I have another salawah for the love of uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi? If we can have another one for the love of Fatima to Zahra alayhi wa salam. And if we can have one more for the love of the Imam of our, our time, Ma Mahdi ajallahu faraj mu sharif. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa lakram. I'd like to congratulate you all and wish you all a Ramadan Kareem. And inshallah, all of our deeds are accepted during this month. What I'm going to focus on today, the topic, the main topic is self awareness and self building. Now, why this topic in the beginning of Ramadan, in the first week of Ramadan? The reason why I chose this topic is because Ramadan only comes once a year. Now, during Ramadan, we notice everyone, they stop something. We stop doing something. For example, if I listen to music, I'm like, okay, you know what? During this holy month, I'm not going to listen to music. It's like a New Year, new year resolution. We do, we do a New Year resolution every time the New Year comes. Every time we go, oh, what's your New Year resolution? I want to do this. I want to do this, this, and that. So you know what? We should have a Ramadan resolution. We should take Ramadan as in to build ourselves. Not just for one month, and then after the month is done, after Eid, okay, we slowly by slowly we go onto our old ways. No, we shouldn't do that. What we should do is we should take Ramadan as a learning process and in a way to train ourselves. Because fasting, as we heard Sheikh Hamam read some of the narrations of the Prophet, fasting, we learned that fasting is just not by the food. It's just not anyone can just go without food. Human body can go without food. It's not a problem. But the thing is, can we go without the materialistics of this world? For example, listening to music, can we go without that? Can we go without doing riba? Can we live, can we live without, the, without these things? Can we live without looking? Or basically, we have to lower our gaze. Can, can we live with that? Or is it only during Shahr Ramadan that, oh, you know what, it's a holy month, Allah is watching me. Allah is watching me only, what, once, once a year? In a month? So within these 30 days, I acknowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I acknowledge that He's watching me. Okay, what about the other days? What about the other months? Is He not watching? Is He not there? Obvious, He's there and yes, He's watching. But why is it that when it comes to Ramadan itself, we focus that, you know what, Allah is watching me. Allah can hear everything. So I have to watch what I say. I have to lower my gaze. I have to read the Quran. Because I have to finish the Quran. This is Shahr Ramadan. Okay. And I have to do all of these abadat in order to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have to wake up on time to pray Fajr. I have to pray all my prayers on time. Why is it that all the other months that we don't pray on time? Why is it all the other months that, oh, you know what? I feel lazy. Is it because of the shaitan? Is this where it goes up to? 
Okay, now I have a question. How many people actually wake up for Fajr during Shahar Ramadan? Shaitan is not here to disturb you. What is, what is the excuse for not waking up for Fajr? What is the excuse for sleeping? Yes, Naum is ibadah. Sleeping is ibadah during Shahar Ramadan. But it doesn't mean you sleep from, from morning to night until the next morning. And then you eat and then you go back to sleep. No. It doesn't mean that. Yes, sleeping is ibadah, but at the same time, you have to wake up. You have to read Quran. You can't sleep the whole day. We're not bears. We don't hibernate. Because you know bears, they go, they go into hibernation and they sleep for months. And then they wake up and then they eat. All they do is eat. And then they go back to sleep again. So is this, is this what we are? No, we're humans. Inshallah, everyone, has an, uh, everyone is uh, created with intellect. So we know how to use it. So during this month, we should learn how to build ourselves. And the ways we can build ourselves, Inshallah, I'll touch on this lect uh, upon this lecture after Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Muhammad and Wa'ala Muhammad. Now, self-awareness. What is self-awareness? Self-awareness is one who, who becomes aware with themselves. So in order for me to fix myself, I have to look at myself. I'm like, do I do this? If I don't do this, what is it that I need to improve? Basically, what I do is I self-criticize myself. In a healthy, I, I give myself a healthy criticism. I'm like, okay, you know what? I don't read. I don't read Quran. So I have to read Quran. I don't go to the mosque, so I have to go to the mosque, and I have to build myself. Not just, okay, you know what, I don't go to the mosque, because it's Shahar Ramadan, so I have to go to the mosque, it's a must. So I do it like a cultural thing, like a cultural thing. No, it's not a cultural thing. You praying is not a cultural thing. It's something that's wajib upon us. Otherwise, why would Allah prescribe it upon us to pray? It's not for His benefit. He doesn't benefit anything out of it of us worshiping him. It is for our own benefit, for the hereafter, to make life easier on this world and the hereafter. Okay, someone can say, look, I don't pray, but Allah is making it easy on me during this world. Allah is giving me everything I want. Okay. But you know what? I have to beware of something. I have to be afraid of something if this is happening. If I know I'm not praying and Allah is giving me everything, then you know what? There's a story basically of, an, of two people. One person, he prays day and night, day and night worshiping Allah. He doesn't get what he wants. There's another person who doesn't even pray. Whenever he wants something, for example, if he wants a Lamborghini or if, if he wants a game, he, he goes on his prayer mat, like, Allah, I want this. Allah gives it to him. So the angels see this happening, they ask him. They're like, this, your servant here is praying for you day and night, day and night. Why is it that you're not giving him anything? And this person over here hardly prays to you. He only comes to you when he needs something. Allah answers in this manner. This person who just comes to me and just asks me and I give it to him, it's because I hate hearing his voice. I don't like hearing his voice. So this is why I just give it to him. Because I don't like his voice. But as for the other person who's a believer, who's praying, who's praying towards me every day and night, he wakes up early in the morning, I love to hear his voice. So this is why I postpone things for him. And that way I can better it. I can make things better for him in the hereafter. So if Allah is, if we hardly pray, pray and Allah is giving us something just like that, we shouldn't say that, oh, look, Allah loves me. Allah is giving me everything I want. No, we should be afraid. We're like, wait, maybe Allah is hating my voice. This is why he's giving me everything I want. But now here, when it comes to self-building, one person, the person themselves, including myself, we have to look within ourselves in order to benefit the community. We can't just go up on the member or anyone just go up like, you know what? 
you have these mistakes, you have these mistakes, and these are your so these are your so-called mistakes. And we can write a books, we can write books and books and volumes of books about other people's mistakes. But when it comes to our mistake, we'll be like, oh, you know what? I don't have no mistakes. Okay, you know what? Maybe I just did this. Or maybe I uh, uh, I can't remember what I did. But yet, when somebody else is asking, or when we are to see other people, when we are to judge other people, we can write volumes of books upon about them. But here, we should do the opposite. We should look at ourselves every day, every single day. We should, even, we should even take a piece of paper and a pen. Every day we should write, you know what, today, this is what I'm going to do. Write it down. This is my goal for today. I want to read 10 pages of the Quran today. And I will not sleep and I, until I finish the 10, page, 10 pages of Quran. I will read not only the Quran, but the translation of the Quran during this month. So for every page I read, I'll read the translation for it. For every page I read, I'll listen to the translation to it. And basically here, we build ourselves up. Because we know a, a house without, without a foundation is not a strong house. So here, what we're building is a house for our faith. Our house in our hearts. This is what we're building within us. So once we built this foundation, nothing can tear it apart. That's why you see most people, when after Ramadan is done, and then the 10 days, and then after it's done, and then a month later, we tend to go back to the old ways. Why? It is because our foundation is not strong. We haven't looked at ourselves properly. Yes, we may look in the mirror at ourselves every day, be like, you know what? Alhamdulillah, I pray. Alhamdulillah, I wear the hijab. Alhamdulillah, I do this. Alhamdulillah, I do this. Yes, but we can do more than this. These things, we can do more. How? We can look at ourselves. Okay, you know what? This is what I want. So how do I go about doing it? For example, if someone wants to get a job. What are the steps that they do in order to go get a job? Their main goal is to get a job. Okay, now, first thing I have to do, I have to think about the experiences that I have on the past. Second thing, okay, I have to actually sit down in front of a computer and build a resume. Now, if I don't know how to build a resume, what do I do? Easily I can go to Google, how to make a resume. Now I read this, I can read this, and the first thing it tells me, objectives. First thing on the resume you put is objectives. Now if you put this objectives properly, I guarantee you the experience will not matter. The employer will not look at the experience. They look at your objectives and like, you know what? This person has goals. This person has ways to reach their goals. So you know what? Let me call them in for, my, for an interview. They won't even further look on. They won't go on. They'll just look at their objectives. This is how they usually do. They look at their resume for three seconds. Literally three seconds. And then they decide if I should call this person back or not. Here, they don't look at your experience. I can put experience as non-experience whatsoever. I can just put volunteer experience. Not necessarily paid work. But here, they look at their objectives. And they're like, let me call this person. Now, the next thing is education. They see the education there, and they see the work experience, the activities and the hobbies, and your reference, if you provide them with references. Now here, this, here, it's, let's take the same thing as building a resume when we look at ourselves. We have to ask ourselves one question. Am I perfect? What could I do to improve myself in order to better the world. Not to better myself, but to better the world and others. Okay, so this is what I do. I put pros and cons. The pro things that I do, I, write, I list them. The cons that I do, I list them. And then day by day, I add more to the pros, which I've done, 
And the cons, I try to avoid them. For example, if I listen to music, if I, if I speak to girls, okay, this ha I have to cross it out. I have to cross this out. Okay, now, I don't wake up for Fajr on time. I have to make that my goal to wake up Fajr on time. I guarantee you, a person who does not pray their daily prayers, you pray every for 30 days, just give it 30 days. Now, I'm not asking for 40 days. I'm just I'm making this a challenge to, for you guys. Make it a 30-day challenge for you guys. Every day during Shahar Ramadan, pray on time. Especially Fajr. And then after the, these 30 days are done of Ramadan, let me know if you ever miss a prayer. If you ever miss a prayer, let me know. You will know, you will notice the difference after Shahar Ramadan is gone. We will benefit from this. And here we, we will be able to self-build ourselves so that we can better the community later on. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, when it comes to our morals, our morals is very important because we know the Prophet ﷺ was sent as a mercy to mankind. Now, before he he preached his prophethood, before he was he was announcing his prophethood, what did people know him as? He people knew him through his morals. People trusted him. He was known as the truthful, the trustworthy. These were one these are some of his attributes that the Prophet had. Even his enemies knew them as the trustworthy. When his enemies, even his enemies, when they used to travel, when they used to go for a long journey and they didn't want to take all their goods with them, what did they do? They left their goods with the Prophet. Because they know he was the most trustworthy person on there. And when he was told to reveal towards his fa uh, to his family, to his kinship, to warn his kinship, what did he say first? Did he say, worship all, there is one God and I am his prophet first? No, he didn't say that. He said, if I was to tell you there were enemies behind this mountain ready and he coming to attack you, would you believe me? They didn't answer him, no, you're a liar. They didn't answer, no, you know what, you're just asking an if statement. They said, of course we will believe you. Because why? Because you are the trustworthy person. You're, you're the person, basically, everyone trusts. We give our trust towards you. So and then when he was to say, okay, then believe in Allah and I am his messenger. Here they decided to go astray. Even though they knew he was not lying. They knew he would not lie. People used to mock him, but yet it never stopped him from, from preaching the truth. It, nowadays, people make fun of us. Oh, like, oh, you know what? You're such a nerd. Look at this nerd. Look at this suck up. You're sucking up to the teacher. Why are you doing your homework on time? Why are you doing this? Why are you reading Quran all the time? What's wrong with you? Like, is something wrong with you? Are you crazy? Like, Astaghfirullah, now we see that good things are bad and bad things are good. But when it comes for us, we tend to get peer pressured and we tend to stop. No, we shouldn't stop. Did Imam Hussein stop in Karbala? No, he didn't stop. Did the Prophet stop preaching the truth? No, he didn't stop. Even his, most of his family was against him. He still didn't stop. Nowadays, we see, we hear of ladies or daughters, their parents, some of them, some parents, some, why do you wear the hijab? What's wrong with you? Why do you put this thing on? You don't even, you, you don't even practice Islam properly. What is wrong with you? So, you, why do you wear the hijab? What's the point? This shouldn't put us down. Ladies, as for, as for the men, when our parents tell like, oh, why do you pray? What's wrong with you? You do this, this, and this, and you pray? You don't listen to me, and you go pray? What's the point of praying? No, you should still pray. And yet, we should still act upon good things, and good, we should still do good things towards our parents. Even if they're evil to us, we should still respect them. 
because this will build will build a foundation a strong a foundation and a strong faith within us because we hear of so many people of depression we hear of so many medication that to treat depression but you know what there's no such thing as medication that treat, uh, that treats depression because to tell you the truth medication what all it does it's a placebo that's all it is it's a placebo and what a placebo is basically it's basically a water tablet made in a tablet it's water that's made like a tablet and you eat it and it seems that it, you're training your mind that you know what if I eat this 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 thing will go away for example if we if we see Tylenol and Advil and all of these things these things are known as placebo they don't do anything most of them, they don't do anything because we we trained our mind. If I do this, if I take this little tablet, my headache will go away. But you know what? I challenge you for something. Train your mind. If I read Quran, my headache will go away. And see what happens. If I pray, my headache will go away. Or if I pray, my problems will go away. We take all these worldly medication as serious, but yet when it comes to our spiritual medication, we don't take it serious. We'll be like, oh, you know what? Allah hates me. Allah, why are you doing this to me? What did I ever do to, what I, what did I ever do to deserve this kind of punishment from you? All I did was pray to you, serve you to the best of my capability, and all you're just doing is throwing punishment upon punishment upon me. What is wrong with you, Ya Allah? Astaghfirullah. This is what we say. This is how we talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is without the self-building within ourselves. Now, I will quote something from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. He says, I emphasize the importance of good morals for you because God Almighty has sent me especially for this purpose. Now here, when the Prophet of Allah is saying this, he's saying, you know what, we should be with good morals. For example, when we look at the Quran and when we read some passages of the Quran, what does it say? It says, establish patience and then prayers. Not prayers and then patience. It's patience and then prayers. There are some ayahs that stress this. Why is it stressing patience? And there are some ayahs that say that harsh, ease comes after hardship. Not ease first and then hardship. No, hardship first and then ease. What we should do instead of complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when something terrible comes upon us, we shouldn't question or we shouldn't be mad, of, mad at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What we should say is, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Oh Allah, thank you. I thank you for making me worthy of this test that you're giving me. And make me, make my heart and my soul be able to bear this patience that you give me so that I may establish patience so that I may follow the right words and the right morals of the Prophet ﷺ. Because what did the Prophet do? For example, if we were to take all the Prophet's tragedy and we were to put it on one side and we were to take the, the last Prophet and we were to put it on one side, it will not overweigh the other Prophets. So here we see that the Prophet, the last Prophet Ali, went through a lot of things. Yes, we can say he's ma'asum. Yes, we can say the Imams are ma'asum. So how can I compare myself to them? How can I not even compare myself to them? How can I compare myself to the dust that's underneath their feet? I'm not telling you to be ma'asum. No one is telling you to be perfect. Allah is not asking you to be perfect. Well, what everyone is asking you guys to do is to strive towards it. For example, when we go to school, does everyone here, I'm sure everyone here wants 100% in their course or in their classes. 
we're, but we're not disappointed when, when we don't get that 100%. Okay, because we know, we knew that we strived our hardest. We tried our hardest to get that 100%. And some of us do achieve that 100%. Some of us do achieve that 99.5% or 90% and so on. But you know what? As long as we try in Islam, we will not fail. We will not fail ourselves as long as we try. But right when we give up, right when we give up hope, then you know what? Faith goes out the window with it. Because hope and faith comes together. If I have no hope, then I have no faith. If I have no faith, then you know what? I'm making it easier for the shaitan to, uh, to guide me away. Because we know that the shaitan comes in different shapes and forms. For example, we can have the shaitan being an ants, a human being. We can have the shaitan being this materialistic world. We can have the shaitan being a jinn. Now, how, how is it that the shaitan can could be from amongst ourselves, the human being. Let me tell you something. Something in psychology that we really stress about when it comes to counseling people. That people who are down, people who are depressed, they tend to bring people down with them. Because if, if they see someone happy, they're like, you know what? I will not be happy until he is at my level. It's not the opposite. It's not like, I, you know what, I have to strive myself to be happy. No, I will not be happy until I bring this person to my level or lower, or lower. This is how a person who is depressed acts, even though they might not show it. But you know what? Psychologically, this is how they act. They'll be like, you know what, I'm going to put down this person until he's lower than me. That way I can feel better about myself. But you know what? This is a drug. This drug is, is addictive. Because once we, we do it once to a stranger, we do it twice to our friends, we do it to our loved ones, we do it to our parents. There are some kids who do that to their parents, and there are some parents who do that to their kid. They're like, you know what? My kid does not deserve to be happy. So let me take everything that makes them happy away from them so that I may feel better about myself. And the kids do the same thing. Then you know what? My parents want me to pray. But you know what? I'm going to make them mad. I'm going to make them feel depressed because I'm depressed. So I'm not going to pray. They're going to tell me to pray. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk back to them. That way I can hurt them even more. Why is it that we hurt people? It's because we don't have this self-building within ourselves. We don't have this self-awareness. Don't do not let it. Do not wait. We shouldn't wait until it's too late. We shouldn't wait until we're in the grave and be like, "Oh my God, I should have done this. This is what I should have done. I shouldn't just fast during Shahar Ramadan. You know, Ramadan is just not with food. It's with your eyes, with our mouth, with our tongue, with our ears, with our feet, with our hand. Your whole body is fasting." Now when we want to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are the days to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do I choose this month in, in, in particular? Because we have no excuse. The shaitans are in chains. And, it, and I'm talking about the strongest shaitans out there are in chains. So now it is you. It is not you against the shaitan. It's you against yourself. Now, are you willing? Are we willing? Do we have that self-desire in order for us to go other places? For example, I was in Toronto a couple, a couple of weeks ago, and I heard on the news, before Ramadan, before this blessed month, Muslims, and these were not non-Muslims, these were Muslims. I'm telling you, in one night, one part of Toronto, one block, there were there was a shooting. 23 people got injured. Two of them got killed. One of that person was a 14-year-old girl. Another person was a 23-year-old man. Now that 14-year-old girl had nothing to do with this. They had no idea why the shooting went on. 
Okay, now, a couple of days before that, I was camping. And I'm telling you, right when we walked, right when we drove in, the lady that was standing there checked us in, and she was happy and she was smiling. And we were driving in. That night, she went to a party, and she died that night because of drinking and driving. Now, should we wait until these things, these incidents happens for us to open our eyes? Should we wait for a death of someone or of, or of a loved one or of a close one to us in order for us to open our eyes? Or should we wait until Shahar Ramadan? You know what? I didn't pray today, so I'm going to pray next Shahar Ramadan. I didn't finish the Quran this month, so you know what? Inshallah, I'll finish it next month. No, not inshallah, I'll finish it next month. Inshallah, I'll finish it this month and you know what now nowadays we don't have school it's august it's summer it's july sorry it's summer we have no school we can you can finish the quran within three days within three days you can finish the quran now i'm not telling you to go tire yourself and finish the quran within three days but i'm telling you your capabilities anyone can do it anyone can do it if I can do it, you can do it. I'm a human being just like yourself. I have blood running inside of me. The same blood you have running inside of you. So why is it that other people can do it and I can't do it? This is the mentality that we should have. If this person can do it, then you know what? I can do it better. I'm not telling you to be selfish. I'm not telling you to go have an ego out there. No. Don't do that. Don't have pride. I'm not telling you go have pride. No, don't do this. What I'm telling you is believe in yourselves. Because right when we believe in ourselves, we can do anything we put our mind to. Anything. And I mean anything. If a person wants to become president, if they put their mind to it and they work towards it, I guarantee you'll become a president. If you want to become a millionaire, I guarantee you'll become a millionaire. Now, if what, but if I keep on holding on to this worldly material world, then you know what? It's going to drag me down with it. And the people in it are going are gonna to drag me down along with it. Now, I'm going to list some of the self-awareness that we should at least pay attention to. One is... What do we want in our lives? That's number one. This is, I'm telling you, we should all think about this. We shouldn't wait until the lecture is over to think about it. We should think about it now. What do we want with our lives? Second, we should list our strengths and our weaknesses. Because we know no one is perfect. So we should list our strengths and our weaknesses. The other thing is, what makes, what motivates us and makes us happy? The other thing is, what do we want to change about ourselves or about our lives? The other thing, I stress on this. Our achievements so far. What have we achieved so far? So we see it's not all negatives. Because if we focus just on the negatives, then you know what? We're going to the, to the road that leads towards depression. We should look at ourselves and see what did I achieve in my life so far in order that I'm here. Another thing. How do, we re how do we relate to others? Because relating to others is very important. Because once we know how we relate to others, we can fix ourselves to better ourselves in order to help ourselves and others. So how is it that I could relate to another person? How is it that I can relate to my sister? How is it, how is it that I can relate to my brothers? How is it that I can relate to my mom or my siblings? Or so forth. Another thing. What do we need to do to improve as a person? Now here, we should be harsh with ourselves. 
What do I need to do to improve as a person? Even the slightest thing can make a difference. Okay, you know what? I haven't spoken to this person in a long time. Let me forgive this person. Let me be the first one to break that barrier, to forgive this person and say salam to them. Let me be the first person to lead the people. Th these are the improvements we should, we, we should focus upon. Because once we do these self-analyzation about, about ourselves, we can better the world. One person, it just takes one person to change the world. Just one person. That's all it takes is just one person to change the world. All you have to do is dream and you can do it. That's it. Have hope and faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're able to do anything you want. And another thing. What is our most important beliefs and values? and how you see yourself as a person. Now, here, my important beliefs as values. Values and beliefs differ. For example, let's just say I have a Muslim friend, he doesn't fast, okay? Now, he invites me to eat lunch or dinner with him. Or let's just say he invites me to eat lunch with him. Some of us will be like, oh, you know what, I'm too shy. I can't tell him I'm fasting. He's Muslim. I don't want to put him on the spot. He, although he should be fasting and he's inviting me to lunch. Then you know what, let me just go. Because our values tell us, you know what, let, let me not reject this invitation of his. So let me just go. Some of us might remain fasting. Some of us might break our fasting because of our friends. But wait, who am I fasting for? Am I fasting for my friend? Or am I fasting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is the first thing. Second thing. Is he Mus isn't he Muslim? Shouldn't he be fasting? Shouldn't I help him? Okay. So now our values is telling us, go with him. But our beliefs is telling us, you know what? Let me tell him, but my values kicks back in and tells you, you know what? Don't be rude. Naeem, don't be rude to this guy. Because if you're rude to him, you're going to lose him as a friend. So now here, I take my values over my beliefs, which is wrong. I should take my beliefs over anything. My beliefs is my faith. And, I should, and we shouldn't be able to change our beliefs or our faith for anyone, even if it's our parents. If our beliefs and our faith is correct... And if it's for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it's Islam is our faith, and we say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammadur Rasulullah, Ashhadu anna aliyun waliyullah. Every day, daily, we say this. N not necessarily out loud, but we say this in our minds or in our hearts, and we believe it within our soul. And we say it, not just the mind connected to the tongue, but we connect our soul with our tongue. Here our beliefs will show within our faces. We don't even have to tell anyone what our beliefs are. They will know that we are Muslims. But now here, when I take that value and I put it towards the beliefs, my beliefs shatters. I have no foundation. It's shaky. It's very shaky. This is why we see a lot of people... It, after Shahar Ramadan, after this holy month, they go back to the old ways. Why? It's because it's shaky. But this is the time to bring our beliefs. For example, we have the, uh, the famous events, the Olympics coming up. Do you think they just train for the Olympics just two months or a month and then, okay, they qualify, they have the qualifiers and they go? No. They train year long. All the whole year they train just for this event. The whole four years, the whole eight years they train just for this event. And if they don't make it, some of them if they don't make it, they start crying, they start bawling their eyes out because they know that they've worked so hard 
towards this. Now, are we going to cry on the day of judgment and tell Allah